Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Oh, my Lord. Praise the Lord, saints of God. As you're coming on in, the virtual Bible study for New Haven Missionary Baptist Church today. Come on in. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, in Mr. Rogers' voice. A beautiful day for a neighbor. God bless you, Missionary Owens. Thank God for all of you. Hello, Fred Drica. It's good to see you. Amen. All of the saints of God. Sister Breed Love, we love you. Amen. I'm going to let you guys come on in. You're coming in pretty quick today. Grace and peace, Leslie. Amen. So grateful for all of you. I'm doing this in a different way today. I am outside. I see you, Mommy. God bless you. Um, and to all of you, my father's children. Good evening, Sister Jackie. Praying for you and your family. I want you to know that. Love you, Mother Talbert. I love you so much. I'm outside today. <laughs> All by myself. Ain't nobody here but me. God bless you, Sister Means. Birds chirping, wind blowing. That's right, Kanani. Everything. I am out here experiencing the goodness of God and the beauty of his, of his righteousness in the earth. And the firmament echoes its power. And we're so grateful for that. Uh, grace and peace be unto each of you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, my sis Yvonne, love you, sis. Amen. Grace and peace to all of you, and I see you all gracing and peacing. Amen. So put that, hey, Roundy, good to see you. Put that grace and peace in here. It's our way. Amen. It's the pilgrim way, and we are pilgrim proud over here in this branch of Zion. I want you to make sure that you uh, send, uh, send your hearts, send your likes, my brother from another mother's on, Brother Harris. God bless you and your wife, man, and your whole family. I want to, uh, again, greet you uh, to our virtual, or, in, or at, uh, welcome you, rather, to our virtual Bible study today. I am blessed to be talking to you today from outside in a, in a lovely uh, park area. I thought it'd be neat to switch it up a little bit, not to be at home, not to be at the church, but to be out in the elements. It is a beautiful day out here today. Not too hot, uh, not too muggy. Uh, very clear day. The sun is out. I don't know if you've been out to exercise or not yet, but I want to encourage you to, again, maintain your physical health, maintain your mental health. I love you too, Vani. Maintain um, all that is it, it, that pertains to you in this season, naturally, spiritually, mentally, physically, always possible, you want to take care of yourself in this season. It has never been more important than right now to take care of yourself, especially with all this time that we have one with the other. I just want to uh, give a few updates before I go into uh, the few little uh, encouraging words that I want to render to the church today. Uh, love you too, Marion. Uh, one thing, and I'm going to move away from the comments so I won't be able to see you guys now because uh, I get distracted and I start responding. Um, a few updates. First of all, I want to thank each of you, and I'm getting ready to switch angles here because I don't really like that angle. Praise the Lord. Okay, I can't do that while recording. We just learned that. Hallelujah. Okay, so one thing I want to update you on as it relates to uh, the home going of my aunt, Mother Evelyn Alvis this Saturday. Um, New Haven, I want to thank you for all of your calls and prayers and your support to not only me, but to my family and all of those that are part of New Haven that are part of my immediate family and the transition of my aunt. That is my grandmother's baby sister. That was, um, uh, you know him as Uncle Herbert, his sister and the grandparents of Keita Stansberry and Chunk. So as you know, our family on that part of our family, they have literally uh, to death, lost a mother and a grandmother, um, or a sister and a mother in less than a few months apart. And so I really need you, as I know you have been, but to continue to pray for my family because it is, it is a lot to process. It is the first time in a long time that our family has been hit 
like this back to back um, during a pandemic. Death is hard anyway, but then you introduce death during a pandemic, during civil unrest, and during all kind of other stuff that's going on in our country and in our world. And it is a lot for people mentally. It is a lot for people spiritually. That is the reason why I am really, really uh, wanting to emphasize in ways in which I probably never have in these 12 years of leading you and serving you as an imperfect man, but yet alone your bishop and your servant to make sure that you are absolutely on top of your mental well-being, strengthening yourself spiritually. And I'm trying to make sure that I find the words to say, whether it be through Bible study, through like just offering encouragement when I do get on the prayer line or even during uh, the sermon that we render on Sunday morning in our virtual church, just to encourage the people. Th this, is, this is not a time. And we thank God for depth in the spirit. We thank God for revelation. We praise God for studying the word of God that we might rightly divide this word of truth, um, that a workman need not be ashamed. And we love that. But people don't need deep, spooky, eerie people right now. What we need is a word from God. What we need is encouragement. What we need uh, is just to know and to be able to look up and know that our Redeemer liveth. Job said it. Our Redeemer lives. Um, Bishop uh, Roy Ronald E. Brown picked it up. He's gone to heaven now down in the Carolinas. And he struck up an old holiness song that said, God is still on the throne. Within your bosom, you have a phone. Whenever you walk, you're not walking alone. God is still on the throne. Listen, the geese know it. This crow, if this crow fly over here, I'm going to run away from this live hooping and hollering. Y'all can judge me if you want. But that crow, I, I don't like these big birds and these arrogant geese. But if they come over here and I should go to running and this live end abruptly, you know that I needed to get away from these ducks and these geese and I didn't have my gun. Come on and say amen. Praise the Lord. I am a firm believer in the, in the amendment right to bear arms. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so uh, as we move on, I just want to make sure that you are um, just very, very cognizant uh, as to where you are and what we're dealing with right now. There, you, can't, you can't deny it. You can't ignore it. You've got to be honest about what this is doing to us as believers and as people. And we want to be very, very cognizant of that in a very, very special way. And so, again, as it relates to the home going of my aunt, services will be this Saturday. Uh, the 20th at the Nazarene Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, the viewing is from 10 to 12. That's open to the members and to our friends and to our covenant brothers and sisters, supporters, those that just want to love on us. And the funeral services, the home going, starts at 12. Now, the home going is only for family. First time we've ever done that. But in lieu of COVID-19 and the restrictions that the CDC has recommended, that's the way our family has decided to do it. I champion and support those efforts, and I will be in accordance with my mask. And if you're coming to the wake or the, uh, and whatnot, have your mask. To my family members, have your mask. And for those that have opted and, and have volunteered themselves to serve our family, thank you, nurses, ushers, adjutants, those that are gonna come to be a support, I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart for being so thoughtful of my family during a time when everything is so questionable. So that's what that's going to be this Saturday. If you haven't already saw it on social media, you've already received the text. If you have not, you will. So that's going to be this Saturday. Uh, as I talk about updating and where we are, as I continue to look at how the country is reopening and the state of Indiana is continuing to reopen and are in the last a few final stages of a full reopening, I want to let New Haven know, I know you've asked a question once again, when will Bishop reopen? When will Bishop, you got to watch your back because the devil is, is sneaky, but we got him. Amen. Now, you ain't in a safe place, but you got to know. Watch and pray. Glory to God. And so you might be asking, well, when is New Haven going to run? When is Bishop going to reopen the church? I will have you know that I remain steadfast and not being in a hurry to reopen the church until it is absolutely essential and necessary and safe. Now, the, the church never closed. New Haven has been open for 60 plus years and we will remain. But the building has been closed. The tabernacle, the cathedral has been closed. And we've been meeting in virtual means, whether that be for meetings, whether it be for worship, for Bible study. I want our youth to know there's something coming for you 
uh, that uh, our youth minister is working up right now on Zoom. So be looking for that, parents. Get your youth ready. We want to connect with the youth to make sure that we maintain their steadfastness in Christ during a time that they've never seen before and being out of church over three months. And it looks like we've got a little more to go. So again, New Haven, we are not reopening. I am not in a hurry to reopen until it is safe for you and for me to do so, for you and I to safely come back together. But you do know next month we're planning an outdoor parking lot service. I won't get into that right now. I'll get into the details later. But no, in July and August, I, I need to see you. I need to be able to look on you outside of looking at your names on Facebook Live. I need to see you in the flesh. And I know you need to see your pastor in the flesh. And that we are working on doing, and I'm excited. I want you to get excited. Get your lawn chairs ready. Get your mask ready. We're coming to have a knockout, stomp down, drag out, Holy Ghost, tongue talking church on the parking lot of the New Haven Baptist Church. And we're going to do that in the month coming. So look out for that flyer. Look out for that promo. It'll be on the way. Again, not in a hurry. I, I, we have a lot of people that are risk and risk, risk factors of which I am in a risk factor myself. And so I'm not going to put anybody in danger. I don't want to put myself in danger. Um, and I want to be mindful of that uh, when we're reopening. So stay steadfast and unmovable. Stay committed. Stay faithful. Stay in tune. Continue to jump on these lives when we do it. Continue to worship God in your giving. And continue to do the wonderful job that you all have been doing for the past three months and counting. So I just, so those two things I wanted to allude to uh, amidst everything else that is going on. Stay prayerful, keep on praying, and we'll make it together. Uh, the church is, I still believe what Jesus told Peter. I'm not changing on this. In the book of Acts, after Pentecost, he said, thou art Peter, petrol, small pebble, little rock, and upon you, I will build my church, and the church will be built upon you, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. They will try. They will attempt, but it won't prevail against you, Peter, as he was the first bishop to establish the church there in Rome. We thank God for that prophetic word spoken by our master. And it remains true through COVID, through civil unrest, through police brutality, through excessive force, and through other wiles of the wicked and the devil that seek to uh, to attack us and undermine us and defame us. God has given us the victory, and I want you to know that today. All of you to know that we have nothing more than victory, even when victory does not seem to be afoot. And I know you're tired of hearing me say it, but I'm not tired of saying it, and I will continue to say it until we all understand it and come into the unity of the faith. And so uh, amidst all of that, as we continue to watch the TV and see different uh, things that would befall our eyes in different settings and different places of media, I know it's hard to believe some of the stuff that we're seeing, some of the stuff that we're experiencing, some of the things that we as faith leaders and, and people of color uh, and just human beings, period, have to address. But but it is a reality that that in the midst of th th this this environment in the midst of this culture in the midst of this season that it is unfathomable but it is a moment where we must capitalize and where we must seek for change seek for strength we're not just going to pray and speak in tongues and believe god we are we're full of action we're full of intuitiveness and creativity to make sure that we do what god is calling us to do in this season and i i'm really burdened and i'm sure all pastors that have an ear to the mouth of God, whose hand is on the pulse of God and what he is saying to the church, I'm sure all of us are just scratching our heads and wondering, Lord, how long and what next? Glory to God. And how can we endure this like a good soldier? He told us in the word to endure hardness like a good soldier. What can we do? What is my position? What is my approach when I see what happened in Minneapolis, when I see what happened in Atlanta, when I see what happened wherever it happened? What, Lord, what do I do? What do I do when a loved one dies? And, and I want to speak to this point because I know that this has been the reality for a lot of people and it's now the reality for myself and my family. What do you do when death was already hard, when death was already difficult? 
when death was already challenging, but death occurs in a season where you can't even grieve your loved ones like you normally would. The day of the repasses are on hold. The day of, of uh, funeral services being packed out for hours and hours is, is a thing of yesterday, yesteryear, like January. And so what do you do when you can't even grieve like we are accustomed in our culture to grieving? Uh, home going services have taken a whole nother approach. Um, visiting loved ones in the hospital, not going to happen. And so, at least not safely. And so it puts us in a conundrum, if you will. It puts us in, in, in like a tornadic type situation where we're just caught up in a whirlwind of sorts and where it seems as if there is no hope. It seems as if there is no support. There is no furtherance. And I just want to tell you that that is all not true. Even though these are times that we have had to go to God in some cases and seek guidance because we've never been here before. We've been sick before. We know what it is to be sick. We know what it is to be broke, many of us. We know what it is to be attacked. We know what it is to have our reputations attacked. We know what it is to, to, uh, to have family issues. We know what it is to lose a job for some, for many of us. Whether you walked off the job or they put you off the job. We know what these, but we don't know. We don't know. We've never had to deal with a pandemic. We've never dealt with uh, 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 racism and systemic issues on the level in which we're dealing with it right now. And so it puts us in a place of fear. And I discern it in the Holy Ghost. The devil is operating. Thank you, Lord. And I don't want to get too loud out here and scare these neighbors. But if they hear, if these folks hear me speaking in tongue, then they know it's God. Amen. But the devil uses fear, fear mongering, fear tactics to paralyze the people, having us to be fearful. I don't care what it's fearful of, fearful of death, fearful of the police, fearful of sickness and catching COVID. I don't care what it is. Fear comes in so many different ways, so many different angles, and at so many different times, and, and is applied to so many different places in our lives. Whether it be fear of the, uh, like as a child, I had a fear almost of clowns. I still, I don't like clowns now, figuratively and and appropriately and naturally, uh, I don't like them. I don't like clowns. I don't, I don't like them. I just don't. I've never been a fan of clowns. And when the movie It came out, that didn't help me none. Brother Pennywise made it worse for me. Now, I watched it because I am a scary movie guru. But clowns, I am not a fan. Whether you are a natural clown or supposed to be one, I'm not a fan. Glory to God. Y'all pray for me as the Lord delivers me holy. But, but I've had a fear of that. All of my, I have a fear of spiders. And so when you see these things, it causes you to kind of re restrain yourself, causes you to kind of second guess. And in, in absolute and extreme cases, it may even cause you to hyperventilate, to become overwhelmed. It may cause you to get stuck. Some of y'all know what it is to be stuck. Praise the Lord. But whatever it is, fear, and I talked about this a couple of weeks ago, Fear really is a powerful thing if you let it be. If you let yourself be tricked into being fearful. The Bible said, don't you be fearful of what man can do to you, but be fearful of what I can do to you in fire. That's what the Bible said. Don't be afraid of what men can do to your body and to anything else that's in the temporal world, in this, in this, in this earth that's temporal. But he said, be concerned about what I'm able to do to your body and your spirit. That's what God said. Those are, those are the words of the Lord in Scripture. And so you, you've got to take a, a bold approach, not an arrogant approach, not a self-centered approach, not a self-righteous approach, but a bold approach to not being overwhelmed, not being uh, arrested, not being captivated, and not being uh, taken down by this spirit and this demon that we will, for the sake of this uh, lesson today, this brief lesson today, that we call fear. Don't let it be. Don't let it do that to you. You have to, you have to acknowledge what it is. You've got to see the devil for what he's trying to do, and you've got to take uh, you got to take authority. Everybody say that. Put that in the lesson. Put that down in the comment. Take authority over your well-being. Take authority over your, over your spirit. Take authority over your mind. Praise the Lord. 
take authority over it. Speak to it. Let it know. Hey, I see you. I see what you're trying to do. I see what you want to do. But here's what the word of God says that you won't do. You won't overwhelm me. You won't overtake me. You will not have me walking and living and abiding in fear. I see the kid over here on the scooter. He got the Holy Ghost too. He need to know as he's riding the scooter through this church lot. The devil is a lot that you shouldn't be fearful either. <laughs> Amen. He ain't fearful. He's riding on a motorized scooter. Scoop down to the flow. Now that's not how you ride it. Stand up and ride it safely with a helmet if you must. But you must understand that fear is something that, that comes to immobilize. You can't even live out your dreams and your, and your desires if you are overwhelmed with fear. You, you can't even advance what God has spoken to you if you're stuck in fear, if you're fearful. And let me tell you something, beloved of God. I don't want you to be fearful of your present. I don't want you to be fearful of your of your future. And let me just, let me, let me speak to this demon. Don't you be afraid of the, of the, of your past and the failures of your past, the mistakes of your past, the mistakes of your present. Let's come a little bit closer to what I'm talking about now when I'm talking about this fear, because whom the son, it has set free. He is free indeed. Don't need you to try to keep me in your prison. By trying to instill fear, the devil is a liar. I'm speaking to the minds and the hearts of the people of God. The 74 of you listening to me. Don't you let the devil keep you paralyzed. That's the word I've been looking for. Paralyzed by fear. You can't be fearful about COVID. You, you've got to do what you got to do to stay safe. But you can't be afraid of it. And I, I have to stand on what God said. God did not give us. A spirit of fear. That's not of God. That comes from the devil. That's how he operates. That's how he keeps you from reaching destiny. That's how he keeps you from reaching the plateau of your purpose. That's how he keeps you from, from reaching the climax of, of, of what it is you've set out to do. God hath not given us, this is Bible, the spirit of fear. But it goes on in the B part of the text to identify what he did give us. But he did give you a spirit of love and the spirit of a sound mind. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of love. And let me not forget power. Hallelujah. Power. He gave you power and the soundness of your mind. And so you, you've got to move into that. Move into that right now on this Wednesday. I believe it's the 17th of June. Move into that right now at 723. Get up and move spiritually into a place where fear does not have you sitting at home with the shades drawn, afraid to live, afraid to go about, afraid to do. The devil is a liar. And I want him to know he's a liar. He's the father of them. Glory to God. You have the ability and the power to live, not just exist, but even during these unprecedented and unsure times, God is calling you. He's calling me. He's calling us. He's calling them to live. Everybody put that down in the comments. I'm going to live without fear. Write that in the comments. I'm living without fear. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I feel this thing so heavy on me in the spirit that I don't know what to do. I'm going to live without fear. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 says, fear thou not. This is Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear thou not for I am. I'm reading it like it's written. For I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Let me read it to you in the New Living, Isaiah 41 and 10. And here's what it says in the New Living Translation. Don't be afraid. Now that could preach by itself and I could take three points and close with don't be afraid. That, that's good preaching material. But let me read on. For I am with you. Let me break this down exegetically. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. Hallelujah. I will uphold you 
with my victorious right hand. For we know his hand have already gotten the victory. Thank you, Jesus. Let me try not to get too excited because I like how this is written. Let me break it down. And I'm going to break it down from the New Living standpoint rather than the King James translation. So if I go back to the New Living translation in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 2, it starts out by giving a clear and simple path to this, to this message to you today. Simply by telling you, stop being afraid. Stop it. Just stop. Come to a complete stop. Not a rolling stop, not a half stop, a full stop. That means you are still. You are standing still. You're not moving. There's no mobility. Stop and declare that I will not be afraid. This is the reason why I'm not going to be afraid. And, and this is for those that would say that you're arrogant for taking that position or you're self-righteous or you're self-centered or you think you are the stuff or you think you're all that and a bag of chips or or you 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 think you above and not beneath and i know you and i know this and i know that or i subject i suppose this or i suppose that or i heard this or i heard that get out of here you slew foot ragged mouth devil don't nobody want to hear that because the bible told me not to be afraid not because of me Woo! Thank you, G. I'm trying not to get excited because I don't want I don't want the police to pull up on me. I don't. But I, I'm trying to hold my peace, but I'm trying to get this across to you. Why am I not supposed to be afraid, Bishop McLean? If, what, what will people say? What will people think? Who cares? Glory to God. I want you to not be afraid. Here's why. Because the Bible says because God is with you. I am right here in the text. Don't be afraid for I. I'm talking about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm not talking about a statue. I'm not talking about a figurine on an altar. I'm not talking about a picture on a wall. I'm not talking about uh, a relic. I'm talking about the God of Jacob. I'm talking about the God that formed the sun and the moon and the star. I'm talking about the God that divided the north from the south, the east and the west. I'm talking about the same God that called the moon into the sky, put the sun in its place. I'm talking about the same God that formed man out of the dust of the ground, spit in the ground, form man, and then breathed into him and man became a living soul. I'm talking about the same God that established the, the day from the night and the night from the day. Hallelujah. The same God that established the summer, winter, spring, and fall. I'm talking about the same God that has made provision, that has paid your bills, that has healed your body. Hallelujah. Heard a dog barking, but even the dog was created by this God. Glory to Jesus. I'm talking about the same God that has kept you in sundry times when you've been up on the mountain and when you've been down in the valley. I'm, that's the God I'm talking about. Yahweh, Je Yahweh, Jehovah Shammah, Jehovah Tiskanu, Jehovah Rapha. Y'all know who I'm talking I'm talking about Mary's baby, the meek and humble lamb, the stone hewed out of the mountain, the, the, the cornerstone, the bishop of our souls, the stone that the builders rejected. I'm talking about the same man that was afflicted, was a acquainted with sorrow that was afflicted, despised, and rejected. He was afflicted. He was, he was despised, a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. I'm talking about the same God that went to a hill called Calvary one day. I'm going to get in trouble out here and, and took upon himself uh, the mantle of sin. I'm talking, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the same God that took Calvary and became man's sacrifice that hung, bled, and died from the sixth to the ninth hour. I'm talking about the same God that they put in Joseph's new tomb. I'm talking about the same God that did a revival in hell for three days. But after three days, he got up from the grave declaring, I've got the keys. I know that Meek Mill said it. I think it was. One of the rappers said he got the keys, but Jesus said it first. I've got the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Grave, where is your sting? Death. Where's your victory? Come on here. Death, where's your sting? Grave, where's your victory? That's, I'm talking about that Jesus. I'm talking about that Savior. I'm talking about the same one that went to the Mount of Olives and ascended. I'm talking about the same one that promised that after you go and tarry in Jerusalem, stay there till you be endowed with power from on high. I'm talking about the same God that sent power at Pentecost that we just celebrated some weeks ago. And I'm talking about the same God that's going to come again to judge the quick and the dead. The word quick translated into the living and the dead. And this is the God that's talking to us through the prophet Isaiah. 
in chapter 41. I'm not going to hold you much longer, but he said, because you don't have to be long to be strong. But here's what he said. And I'm really liking this during the virtual church. I never taught for 30 minutes. I never preached for 25 minutes. I haven't done that in the 24 years I've been preaching, 23 years I've been preaching, but virtual gives a whole nother feeling. Hallelujah to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And so here's what he said in verse 10. I hope y'all can hear me still. Verse 10, don't be afraid for I am. We just identified emphatically so who the I am is that is speaking, that I am, that I am. He says, for I am your God. He be on Shandalabaho. Hallelujah. He belongs to me. And you, I don't know, that's Elder Ferguson that used to sing that with the male chorus. You can't take my Jesus away. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you do. Don't make me mad. I'll go to fight. You can't take my Jesus away. And you can't make me be afraid because I know who he is. He says it right here. And I'm coming to a close for I am with you. He said, the reason why you need to, what you need to do next, because I'm with you and because I'm your God, don't be dismayed. For I am your God. And in being your God, I will strengthen you. I speak strength to all 87 of you that need to hear me as the wind is blowing. My page is in my good Bible. Hallelujah. Don't you be afraid, for I will strengthen you. Don't be dismayed. Here, here, here's what you need to know. He says, I will help you. And I don't know about you, but all of us at some point or another in our walk with Christ, some of us now more so than ever, are standing in the need of God's help. And just because it seems like the hellhounds are continuing to rage or there's no uh, change in your condition, no change in your diagnosis, no change in your uh, work status, no change in your money that's coming in, no change in this, no change in that. Don't you worry about it. God says, I will help you. And I told you a few weeks ago, he's a man that he can't lie. It's not, it's not even possible. Lying is not in him. It's not in him. He took upon the sin of lying, but he took it upon himself without ever committing it. All right. That's the book. I stand firm on that. Any theologian would have to agree if they in the Bible. He knew not no sin, although he became sin for man's sake. That's what the Bible declares. So even though he took the liar upon him, he did not become the liar. That's why he loves the sinner, but he hates sin. And I'm going to say that again, and I know that ain't too popular right and through here, but God loves everybody. He loves the whoremonger. He loves the drug addict. He loves the pedophile. I know you don't want to hear it. He loves the robber. He, he loves the liar. He loves the backbiter, the sores of discord. He loves those that cause dissension. He loves the lesbian and the homosexual. I know the black church don't want to hear it, but you might as well wake up and know that he does. Praise the Lord. He loves the person that steals. He loves the person that commits adultery. He loves the person that commits fornication. And the Bible said, so were some of you. Praise the Lord. And so ain't no need in us forgetting that God loves everybody because, and the reason we know he loves everybody is because he loved you. And he loved me and he did so as the Bible declared in the synoptics that while I was yet in sin, he was loving me and he died for that cause. So he did not take sin upon himself, but he became it. He, he didn't. He did not. I'm sorry. Let me correct that. He took it upon himself, though he did not commit it. He took it upon himself to become the propitiation of God and the and the redeemed sacrifice for man. So he had to take all of these things upon himself. But one thing that he has never done in my life and in yours either, he's never lied. Whatever he said, the Bible says he's going to do it. Whatever he spoke shall come to pass. And though, and though the vision tarry, wait on it. That's what Habakkuk told us in the book of Habakkuk, which is New Haven's theme still for this year. We haven't changed what we said and we'll never change our position in God simply because God is wanting to do something differently than what we expected. Come on, say amen. And so we understand that he said, do not be dismayed for I'm your God. And he said, here's why. I'm going to give you strength. I'm going to strengthen you. When I get done strengthening you, I'm going to help you. When I get done helping you, I'm going to uphold you. If you don't get excited about this and run into your wall and knock off a picture or knock the candle over on the table or, or the juice don't go to shaking on the, on the countertop, then something's wrong with you. He said, he, he said it right here. I'm just a preacher. Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. For I am your God. Here's the points. 
I will strengthen you, I will help you, and I will uphold you. Those are the three, the four points that I want to make sure I capitalize on before I let you go. I will, I will help you. I will strengthen and I will uphold. And I'm not just upholding you any old kind of way. I'm holding you up in victory. I'm holding you up with my victorious right hand for the right hand of God has won the victory. Amen. The hand of God. That's why we announce, pronounce blessings and consecrations with the right hand. Authority, according to scripture, is given by the right hand. When we ordain elders, when we consecrate bishops and elevate vicars and overseers or whatever we call them in your respective organizations and churches and denominations and affiliations, etc., it's done, should be done with the right hand, especially as it pertains to the bishops in the Lord's church. The, hand, the right hand of the bishop is his hand of authority. He blesses people with his right hand. That's the reason why we, when you see us carrying the crozier, it's carried in the left hand so that the right hand might be free for blessings. In some other countries, it's left free to venerate or to show respect by kissing that bishop's ring. We don't practice that so much here in the States, but across the waters, that is a very big thing to symbolize the respect of that priest, that bishop, that clergy member, their right hand. God says, I'm upholding you with this right hand. It is a hand of victory. And so when you can, when you cumulate this text and you make it to the end thereof, and I'm wrapping up, we understand that whatever happens, I don't need to be afraid because God is with me and he's my God. And while he's with me, he's strengthening me. I speak strength into the lives of all 85 of you watching. When he gets done strengthening, he's going to help. I speak help. And I, I hear one of the old mothers in Zion, quick help, not just menial help, but quick help. I prophesied into the lives of every person watching in Jesus name. And I declare, decree, and I prophesy that God is going to uphold. He's going to uphold you. And I declare that you will be upheld in victory. Those are the words I want to leave with you. And you shout about this until you get tired. And then when you get tired, pick it up again. Shout about it some more. He's going to help us. And he doesn't want you to be dismayed. And I'm coming to you with that word, that word of power. I'm getting ready to leave you in a minute, but that word of power, that word of encouragement, that word of strength. And I feel this so deeply in my soul, in the city of my soul, turning over in my belly. I want you to know that you can't be afraid. You cannot be dismayed. We sing a song, say, be not dismayed. Whatever be tired, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take good care of you. And you need to know that. He says, and don't be afraid, and I'm, I'm, I'm closing because I'm with you. And I want every person on here to get the strength of God in your life right now. The strength of God. Understand that God is going to help us. He's going to help you. He's going to help me. He's going to help all of us that believe in his name, that believe in his power, that trust in his might. The help of God is for you. Praise the Lord. And he says, I'm going to uphold you. Can't nobody and can't nothing, nothing you say, nothing you do yourself can cause you to be plucked out of the hand of God. I just want you to know that we have his protection. We have his protection. We have his strength. We have his might. We have his reassurance. And right here in this Bible today, it's beat up because I use it more so now than ever. Right here in the word of God, we have a promise. We have blessed assurance that we should not. This is as God is speaking to the children of Israel. God's help for Israel is what he's saying here in the whole 41st chapter of Isaiah. I encourage you to read all of Isaiah 41. It's Isaiah 41, uh, 1 through 29. It's only 29 verses. Read it. Read it. It talks strongly about how God's going to be helped and how he's going to contend with them that contend with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so as I get ready to leave you now um, in, in this natural setting, out here underneath God's blue sky and his son beating upon my brow, I simply wanted to encourage somebody somewhere to be encouraged. Um, don't come to you today with a bunch of fancy words and a bunch of Latin and Greek and, and a whole bunch of deep and, and spooky 
revelation, I come to simply tell you, God is going to take care of you. Get rid of this fear. I discerned it when I came on. That's the reason I'm talking about it, because I picked it up in the Holy Ghost. Get rid of the fear. I'm talking to me. I'm not just talking to you. When I preach, I'm preaching to me first, and then I'm giving it to you the same way I felt it. That's the reason I give it with such, with such power, because I feel it in power. Amen. I don't feel this in no fairy tale, bedtime story. I feel it in power. And just as much as I'm encouraging myself as David had to do, I'm encouraging you through bearing a loved one and whatever else that, that I have to deal with and contend with in this season, I won't be fearful. I cannot be. You cannot live. You cannot live. You will only exist if you walk around immobilized, arrested, detained in fear. Be loosed from fear. And I know that's easier said than done. I know somebody, I hear you in the Holy Ghost, even through Facebook with Bishop, you don't understand. Yes, I do. I do understand. You don't know. I haven't worked since March. I haven't worked since since all this stuff started. And 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 I'm, I'm not working fully like I should be or like I was. And I've lost this loved one and this loved one is gone. And I haven't been able to see this loved one. And and I haven't been able to come to worship. And I'm I'm struggling in my faith. I'm struggling in my commitment with God, because now you have to do it almost. Uh, it's a more independent way. You don't have a weekly tutorial in church service on Sunday morning from 11 o'clock to whenever to tell you what to do, how to do. But you do have these avenues in which to encourage you and which to draw you in. But but it's different when you don't have somebody standing over you telling you, hey, the wages of sin is death. God going to encourage you. God going to heal you when you don't have me, us there, your leaders, your pastors, your servants to lay hands on you and do all of this stuff that we've been trying to encourage us to do since 1992 for ourselves. You've got it, it, we, we're not on our own. But in a way, there's a strong independence that's needed amongst the saints. You've got to operate in that power. You've got to operate in that independence. You've got to operate in that conviction. You've got to operate in that position that states that I've got what I need because I'm connected to the God of my salvation, the God of the universe. He is God. And beside him, there will never be anybody else. And that is a fact, Jack. <laughs> I just wanted to interject. That's a fact, Jack. Amen. You, you, there'll never be anybody. I'm alpha. He said it. I didn't say that. He said, I'm alpha and I'm omega. I'm the beginning and the end. There'll never be anybody before me and there'll never be anybody after me. And there will not be anyone during me. There will, no COVID will take his place. No civil unrest will take its place. No anything will take the place of God. And when it does... He comes and he uproots it at the root and he tears it down. So, and that includes this fear. Let him take that. Let him take that. Tear it up and tear it down. Because fear does not belong in the lives of God's people. All right, saints, I'm done. And I just wanted to leave that with you again. And I, I've, I've gone on uh, uh, about 40 minutes here. And I want to conclude on this wise. I want you to make sure you understand we were in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. But I personally would like to encourage you in your devotional time, of which I'm praying that you are doing. If you haven't been doing it, there's no excuse now except laziness and slothfulness and complacency. I encourage you to read Saints of God. And I'm about to hurry up because I see a blackjack as big as a Cadillac. And I'm about to get up out of here. Praise the name of God. Amen. But read the whole chapter of chapter 41 read isaiah 41 in its entirety it's only 29 verses and then you get into chapter 42 when god is dealing with his chosen servants but i want you to read how god helped israel and how he dealt with the enemy thank you jesus and i don't know what your enemy is and i don't know who your enemy is but we all have them we all have them and some of them we might have rightfully made enemies and some of them we may not have. There's nothing you can do about that. But you've got to let God do the fixing. You've got to let God do the fixing. And I, I am in a place right now where I have to be so cognizant of me, so cognizant of me that I do what makes for pushing forward in the help and in the peace of God. I love everybody and I try to love everybody 
And uh, I understand that sometimes relationships and friendships and kinships go astray and things don't go the way you want it to and people leave with hurt feelings and they leave feeling away. And I've never been a person that wanted to hurt anybody's feelings because I've had mine hurt too many times. Um, and I've, I've never wanna be a, a uh, catalyst or a person that brings that and if I have I, I repent of that because there's nothing that I've ever wanted to do or or do on purpose um, and I, I'm and you, this this season has taught us to be in tune with our humanity to be in tune with our connections uh, and to be in tune with our relationships to be in tune with us with us that's right Tasha I hear you sometime I'm my own worst enemy and sometimes it's the internal fight. I think I, I preached that a couple years ago when the enemy is me. Y'all remember when I preached that? Or the enemy inside? It was something like that. But it was talking about how the enemy is not my neighbor. It's not the person that's spewing hatred or discord or trying to tear me down. It is sometimes me. And that's the bishop talking. Sometimes it's me. And sometimes I have to go, oftentimes more than not, back to where I first believed and make sure that my little raggedy self is together. Praise God. I ain't going to call y'all raggedy, but I'm going to call me raggedy. Amen. And if you tell the truth, you say, Bishop, you ain't by yourself. I'm raggedy too, sometime. Come on, say amen to me. Amen. So I see my mommy's on here. I see your hearts, mommy. And so in the midst of that, in the midst of that, don't be fearful. Don't let fear captivate you. Don't let your mistakes arrest you. Don't let what you've lost or what you gained be a thing that keeps you in a place that God told you it's time to move forward through. All right? Onward and upward. The sky is the limit to what I can have. I expect a miracle. God will perform it today. Amen. I'm looking for a miracle. All right. I'm not going to sing it. Amen. I love each one of you. Thank you all for joining me today. Sister Harding, I love you, Sister Lisa. Let's pray for Sister Lisa, who has a major surgery coming up. Sister Lisa is um, a, a helpful and awesome person. She takes care of our church uh, and keeping it clean and, and looking beautiful for a lot of us. She even takes care of our homes. I am one of her clients. Amen. And I know she has a major surgery coming up. Let's pray for her in a special way. Let's pray for all of the people of God that are sick and afflicted and uh, are standing in need of God's help. Let's pray for every, if that's right, Tasha. I like that. That, I, that. Now you didn't, you didn't get me excited. That's why I don't read these comments. I have to say, piggyback off of what Sister Tasha just said. Those are the words of my father in the ministry, the late Reverend Roosevelt Sanders. He says, I'm fickle, finite, and full of failure. And that's the truth. And for the past 12 years, I've let New Haven know that Bishop McLean wasn't perfect. But one thing you can't take away from me, and that's that I am anointed. I'm anointed. I've got 24 years of an anointed record. And another 12 years of anointed leadership at the New Haven Missionary Baptist Church. Not a perfect man by far. Never stood in any pulpit and proclaimed that I was. But you can't take away my anointing. You want to know why you can't take it? Condom of Oshia, because you didn't give it. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. And I want you to have that same attitude. Come on, you got to get indignant with this old slew foot, uh, yuck mouth, ragged foot, nappy head, knock kneed, rusty knuckle devil. You got to get with him. Come on here. Ain't scared of no devil. You loose here. I've got the Holy Ghost. Yes, I do. And I've got it like the Bible said. Not this macaroni, instant noodle, ramen noodle, Holy Ghost. I worked for this. I cried for this. And I'm fighting like hell to maintain it. Praise God. And I'm going to leave that alone because I feel something rising up in me. And it's, it's, I don't know if it's 25th and Hillside or if it's a righteous indignation. And sometimes it kind of go hand in hand. So I've got to kind of keep that old man under, under arrest and on the cross. Amen. I love you. Let me say it again. I love you. I love you, I do. I love you truly, 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 truly. To each one of my members, our friends, and, and those of our supporters, and, and, and those that might just be on today to see what we're doing, because we know there's a lot of lurkers in the, in the body of Christ. However you made your way to this page today, you're welcome. 
New Haven is always welcome to everybody and we won't stop. Amen. All right. Saints of God, I love you. You'll hear and see me again on Sunday. Tune in to our virtual uh, worship service on Sunday. If you have not rendered your tithe and offering from Sunday, when you get off of this Facebook, you go to Givelify, you go to Text to Give, you go to uh, all the ways we've got to give. Put it in the mailbox, whatever you need to do, but make sure that you are making uh, God your, um, your portion as it relates to giving. If you have any pastoral care needs, you see that's just been pinned in the comments, please let us know so that we can do all we can. I love you too, Karen Carter, that we can do all we can. Love you, Saeed, um, to um, help you out in this season. I love you, Maxwell, my little buddy. Love you, man. I got some plans for you in ministry when we come back. I know your mommy's probably already told you. Um, and to all of you, cuz, I love you too. Cousin Renee, I love you. I love you, Missionary Bradley. Love you, Kim. Amen. Let me see these hearts. Love you, Mother. Mother Gloria. Come on. Let me see these hearts. <laughs> God bless. Amen. Love you, Breed Love. And to all of you that I know have been dealing with certain things. Some of you have called me. Some of you I haven't been able to talk to, but I picked you up. I love you, Sheila. Oh, that's Sister Sheila. I haven't seen you in so long. Amen. Lives there with my grandmother. In the same building, Sister Sheila Wilkes. Amen. We love you. And I and I, I love you. And I almost hate to leave you because I miss you all so much. But we can't stay on Facebook Live. Ten and I love you. I need to hear you do one of your woo. It's been so long. I need to hear it. Amen. Sister Drew, I love you. Sharon, I love your stories when I first get to church. I you normally stop me and hold me up from getting in the office. And I used to used to didn't like it, but I miss it. <laughs> Sharon, I love you. Sister Levi, y'all know I, I got to cut up. Uh, Jayana, I love you. Marion, Mother Garner, Missionary Garner, Sister Means, Sister Williams. Thank you, guys. I feel the love all the way across the virtual airways and in this, in this little park I'm sitting in. All right, I've got to go. I think an ant just tried to bite me, and I've got to get out of here. I love you guys. Be strong, be safe, be encouraged, and know that fear, I love you too, mommy. Know that fear absolutely has no place. Love you all. Thank you for those of you. Uh, <laughs> I carry my father's spirit, Tracy. Amen. Uh, I want you to um, make sure, what was I finna say? Make sure that you, um, Continue. I love you too, TT. Make sure that you continue to connect with us via the uh, the prayer line that is on Sunday mornings and Wednesday. We had it today. Let let us uh, make sure that we are supporting the ministers and the missionaries that are pouring out for us on these calls. I'm not always on the call. I've raised these people to function without me, and that's good leadership. And sometimes I just slide on just to see what's going on. But I know that the people that I've charged to take the reins and to help me continue to lead New Haven in a virtual way is doing a phenomenal job as we pray for you each Sunday morning at a designated time and each Wednesday uh, in the afternoon, early afternoon or morning um, before we get to our power um, to give you a word of encouragement and prayer. That's what we have to do. We've got to always pray and never faint. All right, I'm signing off. God bless you. God keep you. Remember, we have the victory. Peace.